What's up guys, Theo here doing a prediction for Themba Garimbo versus Pete Rodriguez. So right now, Themba Garimbo is a minus 265 favorite and the comeback on Pete Rodriguez is plus 195 on DraftKings. And guys, I like Pete Rodriguez here. I just love all the dogs on this card apparently, but um, yeah, I think that Themba Garimbo is pretty damn overrated and uh, no way he should be encroaching on a minus 300 favorite really against anybody that has any fights in the UFC. Um, yeah, I think that there's some kind of like agenda, not maybe from UFC people, but maybe from like people higher up above or something. There's some kind of like agenda surrounding this Themba Garimbo guy. Um, I think he's getting like a pretty hard push by the promotion because he's African, he's from Zimbabwe, and there's like this whole story about him going to Fury FC and getting into the UFC, wanting to be a UFC fighter or whatnot. You know, The Rock bought this guy like a house. It was like a big social media stunt or whatever, but this guy just does not have what it takes to hang in the UFC. He's terrible. And I don't know why, but no one seems to want to admit it. I feel like on the UFC broadcast, they're in these guys' ears telling them, talk about how great Themba Garimbo is. Talk about how amazing it is that he's from Africa and he's African. Talk about how dangerous he is. You know, when I first started watching Themba Garimbo's tape, I thought it was, okay, this guy's a good hammer and a bad nail. And my thought as the tape progressed on was I was like, you know what? I was wrong. This guy's not a good hammer, bad nail. He's not a good hammer. He's just a bad nail. He's not even a good hammer. Um, he seems uncomfortable everywhere the fight goes. He will be winning striking exchanges on the feet, but out of nowhere, he will decide to suddenly clinch up and like try to drag people down. That seems to be his main thing is he likes to like, even though he has really long kind of powerful strikes, he doesn't use it. He like uses it to circle around and then he just immediately tries to drag you down and does the most boring like wrestle fucking you've ever seen in your life where he's just like mermaiding guys legs and like I think his entire game honestly is built around trying to get rear naked chokes because you see him constantly trying to like slip behind guys get he gets guys in rear naked chokes and then like doesn't finish it. He never like finishes the rear naked choke, but he seems to keep trying to go for it. So I think the guy just has some kind of thing for a rear naked choke. Maybe it's the only real tool he has for finishing fights because he can't seem to finish. Uh, I, he can't. He couldn't finish a sandwich, in my opinion. This guy. I mean, he. There's a. There was a point where he knocked the guy. Who was it? Takashi Sato. He knocked Takashi Sato down like clean. And he like rushed in and started ground and pounding him like really hard, crazy. And somehow he didn't finish him. I mean, the guy just, he he can't finish if you serve your chin up on a silver platter to him or your neck. He just could not finish. He got submitted by A.J. Fletcher, who we've discovered is not really that great. A.J. Fletcher, we've seen where his level is. Um, And I mean, you go back, you even watch this guy's reach up. I mean, Themba Grimba has some of the worst body language for a pro fighter that I have ever seen. Uh, they talk about how his cardio and his jiu-jitsu is good. No, it's not. He gasses out. He gassed out in, like, the first round against uh, AJ Fletcher. You heard Daniel Cormier on the mic. He was saying, we were on commercial break, guys, but if you didn't see it, Themba Grimba was on the stool, and he looked absolutely exhausted. And I was like, exhausted? He didn't do anything in that round, in the first round against AJ Fletcher. And then you go back, you watch his fight in Fury right before he got in the UFC. He, like, wrestle fucks the guy the entire time, is, like, barely winning. At the very end, he lets the guy get on top of him and start pounding him and beating the crap out of him on the ground. And he just, like, is sitting there trying to dodge. And uh, he, like, is perfectly happy to just finish a fight that he was winning by razor close margin. He was perfectly happy to sit there and let the dude tee off on him on top of him for the last like the last like 30 seconds of the fight in a fight he was and then he got up and put his hands up and was walking around. I mean, the more I think about what I saw on his tape, the more I think this guy is legitimately a fraud. Cause uh I mean you saw in the fight against in the fight against like Takashi Sato, or it might have been Fletcher, I don't know, one of the first rounds, I think it was Takashi Sato. He like ends like the round trying to get a submission on him, doesn't get off the submission. Takashi Sato gets up and starts walking around 
and he's laying there on the ground like this, looking like Mike Malott when he got finished by Neil Magdy, literally laying like this when the round ends. I was like, why the fuck is he laying there like he just got TKO'd finish on the mat and the round ended and he won the round? So he has the worst body language I have ever seen from a professional fighter. I mean, seriously, that's not a women's MMA fighter. I'm sorry. Some, some of those girls, you see worse body language out of them. They seem like they don't even want to fight. Demba seems like he wants to fight. He's just bad at it. And I don't know what his upside is. I don't know what he's ever trying to do in fights at all. I mean, you just watch him fight and you're like, what the hell is this guy's game plan? Because he doesn't seem to have one. And yet he's a minus, almost a minus 300 favorite. Everyone's talked about him like, like he's going to win this easily. Guys, I don't get why, because Pete Rodriguez seems to be a bad motherfucker. The guy only has a loss to Jack Della Madalena, Madalena for God's sakes. Yes, he's only 5-1, and one, but he's like knocked out every single one of his opponents. And if you go back and you watch his icon tape, which is on UFC Fight Pass, the guy's got slick hands, man, and power. He knocks motherfuckers out cold. And, uh... Man, it's he's kind of reminds me of Chepe Marsicall almost. And yes, his last fight was against Mike Jackson. For God's sakes, Mike Jackson, that's a weird dude. I don't know how the hell he stayed in the UFC for six years and only fought like two times. Uh, he must have had a full-time job and just been a part-time contract fighter or something like that. I don't fucking know. But yes, he beat up uh, Mike, Mike Jackson, and that's not like a good look or anything. But I think they literally just wanted to feed him a win. I think somebody knows something about Pete Rodriguez. I think somebody in the UFC brass and matchmaking, I think somebody knows that this guy is good. And I think he just ran into a savage really early on. I think they made a mistake putting this guy against Jack Della Maddalena. And guys, Jack Della outstruck and boxed him and laid him down. And there's no shame in the loss of that. The guy had four fights and he fought Jack Della for God's sakes. I mean, Jack Della is like one of the top contenders right now in 170. So I don't know how that matchup ended up happening. But I really think that this dude has way more potential than Themba Garimbo. And at plus 195, he is definitely worth a shot here. Because you saw in his icon tape, I watched two of his icon fights. Um, one against some guy with a weird name, Bixby or something like that. And one before that. And there's multiple times where he goes to the ground with his opponents in exactly the same, some of the exact same positions that Themba Garimbo takes his opponents into, where he's like side mounted on them, trying to get behind their back. And he ground and pound was like almost finishing these guys with ground and pound. I think one of them, I think was a ground and pound TKO. So, I mean, if these fighters both come in and fight the way they normally fight, it's going to end up with Themba Garimbo trying to get him down and sub him, and he's going to TKO Themba Garimbo on the ground. Uh, he is kind of hesitant in the first round, and he's not a great striker from distance, Pete Rodriguez. But when he gets there on you, my God, he's explosive, and he's got deadly one-punch knockout power. So I like Pete Rodriguez quite a bit here, and I'm probably going to take a .25, maybe a .5 unit uh, play on him on the Bet MMA tips. I am getting a little bit spooked by how many dogs I like on this card, but I am kind of just saying fuck it and betting all the plus money that I can get because, hey, why not? Either this is going to be one of the weirdest cards in in MMA history and we're going to have a bunch of like mid-tier uh, favorites winning, but I don't think that's what's going to happen. I think we're more than likely going to see a lot of upsets and I see a lot of spots on here, so I'm I'm going to keep picking dogs on this card until, and, and I'm going to bet against them, but Garimbo until he loses, even if he beats Pete Rodriguez somehow, I don't give a fuck. I'll bet against them, but Garimbo in the next fight. Cause the dude's legitimately a fraud. I swear to God he is. So, uh, anyway, guys, Pete Rodriguez is going to be the pick. Keep it locked in here, guys. Plus 195. More picks coming later this week.